Okay, you guys, to get you started with the house builder package, I wanted to just do a house from start to finish and then create a prefab for it so you can see how you build it, how you texture it, and how you would save it. So I'm going to use this as my model. This is just a Dries home, which is just a builder in our community. Um, but uh, you can find anything online, whether it be your clubhouse or just a small house that you want to replicate. And um, one of the things that I've done with the new house builder is limit the need for you <clears throat> to go into Photoshop. The only reason you would go into Photoshop is if you want to customize your windows. So um, I'm going to show you that here. But uh, basically, you're going to import your package. You're going to go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package. And then you're going to navigate to where you save the DPR House Builder and import that. It's going to create a folder on your project panel, the DPR House Builder, V12. And then you're going to open it and you're going to see this. Um, if you want all the blocks that I've made, you just drag the All Blocks Prefab into the scene. And, um, and then you're going to see all the blocks I made. To be honest, you're not going to need this that often. A lot of these All Blocks are meant for like skyscraper buildings if you want special windows um, to be uh, differing on the sides of the building. Uh, but to be honest, a lot of these uh, course um, houses won't need windows on the sides of the building. It's just not going to be seen. So it's kind of overkill. And so I honestly don't use this that often, the all blocks, but they're there if you need it. There's also dual texture blocks. So if you maybe want the front of the building to be brick, and then maybe siding um, on the side of the building, you would use these dual blocks because they have got two textures on them. So you can texture the face differently than you would texture the side. Um, so let me just show you here real quick. Um, the other thing that you can do besides the all blocks, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this all blocks here from my hierarchy is the quick build. And so this is what I use. These are more the uh, condensed form of blocks. And really I can do most everything I need here with these front uh, four blocks. The other thing that you're going to have as well is if you go into my custom blocks, I've just made a few essential prefabs to building houses. So the house that we're going to be building here, um, usually I do some pre-planning so you can count uh, faces. All my blocks are typically three meter by three meter. And so in the end, it's designed to be one, two, three, four, five blocks across. And then the depth on this, I'm going to just make four blocks wide. You could do it three blocks as well. And I've made a prefab of the two-story five by four. And so you can see that that's essentially already done for you. And I will show you how to make these prefabs. So if you have a community um, of maybe larger houses, like some of the villa type houses or mansion houses, and you want to make your prefab with six by five, you would be able to do that and, and store it here as well. I have not created a bunch because I just want to leave some room for your creativity and it's impossible for me to guess what everybody's going to want to do as far as customizing. So I'm just going to drag a few of these out um, and uh, you'll see they sort of correlate to this build. It's why I've kind of made them this way, but uh, you're going to have the two story um, two by one, two story one by one. And you see when you drag them out, you won't see them right away. If you're zoomed out far, you may. Um, but when I drag them in, see how you don't see it here? It's kind of down below. I don't know how to center it over your cursor. Um, that may be my fault. That may be Unity. But in the end, if you drag it and move it around a little bit, you'll eventually find um, what you're looking for there. So I've just drug a few of these in place, and you're going to see how I use these to build. Now, one of the first things you'll want to do is after dropping uh, the blocks into Unity here, is these are all in one prefab. So see how they're all together? They're in this quick build in the hierarchy. And what you wanna do is actually, you wanna break this apart here so that you can select each of these. Now, if I click on it and it's selected and I click on a block, it will now select it. But I don't wanna have to keep doing that. So what I'm gonna do is break the prefab first. And so how you do that is you pick it in the hierarchy here, you pick it in the scene and you see it's all one. Control Z it to put it back down. And what I'm going to do is go here and select the railing three millimeter, scroll down with your mouse wheel, and then pick the very last object. So see how all these are highlighted with, and you're going to do that with shift left mouse. So I've highlighted all the blocks in this project or within the quick build. And then I'm going to just drag them with my left mouse 
until I get this line here. See, so that's outside of quick build, and I'm not inside of either one of these. It's not highlighting one story. I'm outside of it and drop it. And then it's going to tell me to break the prefab, and you're going to continue. So what you've done now is put each of these individual blocks outside of the quick build. And this is just a container. Think of it like a box. And we're just now dumping all our Legos outside of the box here. So I can go ahead and hit delete and delete the quick build word there. And that was just a container. And when we're done with all this, we're going to delete all these objects. So anyway, what I'm going to want to do now is take these one by one blocks in this one, one, one by one block here. And we're going to just do a sl box select over it. So left mouse and drag. And then I'm going to hit control D. And what I've done is just copy these five blocks. Because you're going to see they're going to have different windows for us that we're going to want to use. And um, it depends on the window texture that you've used, what window is going to show up here. So this is the base window texture. And you're going to end up changing it to something different. So you're going to open your DPR house builder and you're going to go to materials. And you're going to go to this window roof fascia. And all I've given you here is just two different textures. One is this window suburban black. If you go to inspector and you look at it, um, it's made up of this texture. So if you click on that texture, you'll see where it's coming from here. And it's, a, it's, a, in, it's in the texture folder. And um, if you make it bigger here, you can see kind of what's going to be happening. So there's the one that's the Windows Suburban Black, which is this texture here. And there's some shutters on that texture. If I can make it bigger for you for you to see. Um, there's a black door, and this is where Adobe comes in. So if you open your Adobe, you would actually be able to customize that. So if you open the window door generator, and you can do this by right-clicking and choose Show and Explorer, and then you can find your uh, window door generator and open it in Adobe. And I've got two of them open here. Let me just close this one. But uh, you'll see this is where you could customize your windows. And um, I'm going to put the legend on here so you can see. And uh, you have the ability to make four different windows and two different doors. And each of them are labeled. So there's three columns. So this is column one, column two, column three. And if you open the column one, you will see C1R1 is actually empty. It's, it's sort of reserved for customizing. C1R2 is where you're going to find this window, C1R2. So it should be somewhat common sense to follow this here, but it can get messy. Um, so within C1R2, you have a bunch of windows you could choose. And so you can pick different windows. And I've shown some of this before. Um, but then you can also put um, on your windows, you can do things like put some trim, and then you can put uh, trim above and below the window. So I'm going to take it away there. And then you can also put some shutters here. So there's a lot within here. I'm going to just let you kind of figure out and mess around what you could actually get out of this. Um, but I've got just some basic windows for you to be able to use. If you want to customize something, if you can't do it, uh, just PM me and I can uh, kind of make something for you if you have something specific. But in the end, then you would just, when you're done with what you want here, you would close your legend, and then you would do File, Save As, and then you would save this as a new PNG file, and then you would bring that into Unity. And then when you bring it back into Unity here, um, you would end up being able to make a uh, material um, for this window texture. So let me just show you this now. I'm going to go with the Window Suburban Brown. Um, actually, let's just go with the window suburban black because I know that has these vertical slat shutters on it I made. So really, this is just has vertical slat shutters. The other one has traditional shutters. But watch when I drag this over here. See how the C1R2 is going away? Um, but see how it's got the vertical slat shutter. So in the end, you're going to texture your blocks with this window suburban black. And, and those numbers are going to go away. Let me just show you this so you can see what's happening. You could do that. See how if I do the brown, it's different windows. So it's just a different set of windows. It's made up by this texture, remember? So C1R2 was this block here. And so in the end, uh, we're going to just texture all these windows 
with the, uh, and unfortunately, I don't know a way to multi-select and do them all at once. So you gotta, unfortunately, kind of, this is a little tedious to it. I apologize. I don't, if there's someone out there that knows how to do this faster to do it to several at once, um, you could let me know, but you can't, uh, you can't, this is a prefab, so you can't really break it, but you can't select, well, maybe you can. So they're all the same here. So I've selected these four. Let's see what happens here. See where it says window here? I'm gonna drag the window suburban black to the window there. All right, and so we textured several at once. So there you go, that's how you would do it. Um, so there's two ways to access the texture. When you go into a block, like I'm picking this block here, see how it's got two elements to it, zero and one? The zero is the window element, which is a transparent texture. The one is the base element uh, or the base material. And so that is also these materials that I made for you. So this base custom, and I've kind of pre-done this, um, but I've got a brown, a variegated brown texture of stone. And you can drag that over these blocks. So let's do, see what happens if we select, let's select all these facing blocks. And then for the base, I'm gonna drag this stone variegated brown over top of it. Okay, so see how we've textured them all? I missed this one, no big deal. Just grab this and drag it over. Now in the previous film, you should have seen how you can make your own texture if you want, your own material. So what I'm doing when I do my own materials is I do not change any of these in the base. I copy one in the base and then change it and drag it to the custom. Treat the base as like your default files that you don't ever want to overwrite. And so in the end, I'm just duplicating something here. And so you would do that by, if you did, um, you know, let's, uh, let's just duplicate one of the brick just so you would see. So like if you wanted to do brick, but you would control D it. So you select it, control D and it will make brick one. You would rename this by clicking on it once with the left mouse and rename it. Um, and then you would say maybe deep red. And then you can drag this to your custom texture folder. And now you've got brick deep red. And then you're gonna make it, you know, whatever your dark red. And then you can see what that would be. See how if I put it on the window, it, it makes it look funny. So you wanna go just to the outside and the reason that is, is when you pick this, you can see the window is actually, um, if you can see that, hopefully you'll be able to see that, is faintly showing up. It's a transparent plane in, in front of this block. And so when you want to texture the base, see how you just go just to the outside and we'll get it. If you go too close to the window, you're, you're texturing the window. So I don't really want that. Uh, so I'm going to go back and put my stone variegated brown over top of it. So you kind of get the idea on how you're going to texture these things. And uh, so let's go back to my picture and see what I was really going for. So the door has stone around it. And then we, we're on this, we're really on this um, two-story tall um, facing here. So it's really this piece. And we're going to want to put the door here. And so I'm going to delete this piece here. And you got to break the prefab to do it. Click continue. That's fine. And the door, I can steal from here, um, but I can also come over here and grab the doors right here. So I'm going to control D and drag the door over. Now this is going much slower than I would, you know, because I'm trying to show you as much as I can about what's going on here. And now I haven't textured it yet. It's kind of nice to build without uh, texturing first, because then you can see if you screw something up, Unity is a little fickle in that uh, if something's just off, sometimes even when you do the uh, do the vertex select, it may come in and be just off like this. And then this may show some flashing textures from a distance or you can see this line. So what I do is I scroll in close here. So I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll in. I know that's sometimes frowned upon and people like to use right mouse and W or S. I scroll in and scroll out sometimes as well. Then I'm going to hit V or pick the object you want and then hit V and it's going to go in this vertex select mode. So I'm holding down V right now and then I'm going to go to the lower left corner. See how it can go to other vertices within this, but 
lower left corner, left mouse, lock it in place there, okay? And you can see, see it's still got a little split there, and uh, so it's not just perfect. Sometimes you can't, you can't get it just right. Um, you know, it can be a little frustrating, but hopefully that won't, um, hopefully that won't show. All right, so now we've got our door in, and so that's what it looks like. Remember, it looks like this. And, uh, and now that top window is more like a little dormer window. So let's go get that little window. That's right here. So I'm going to control D and just use that as my, um, my building, you know, that block. I'm just going to keep duplicating some of those blocks back there. Um, and then you're just going to put that into place. You don't want to zoom in, make sure it's locked in. Okay, so now we've got the basic um, two-story uh, block there. And now we can texture it if we want. So we're going to drop the uh, stone over top of it all. Uh, remember, we can pick some of these, but I don't think we can pick all of them together because they have different elements. Uh, so in the end, I just think it's faster to just drag. Hopefully, this, you know, for something larger, you may want to um, uh, just put it on the one block first and then before you duplicate it. Now for the roof, it's a little different. The roof has a fascia, and that fascia is made up from this window roof fascia material. So remember we're on the black one, the window suburban black. Drag that to the fascia. It will color that white. The roof itself, we have to get a different texture for, and that's going to be from the roof custom or the regular roof. And same thing, I would just duplicate something and make it what you want. And so I'm just putting this... Uh, Dimensional shingle black. It's kind of not black because I used that in the previous tutorial. We'll make it black now or a little darker, kind of an asphalt. And um, so you've got that there, okay? Um, actually, this roof may have been brown. It's kind of off gray. Um, let's make it lighter. Anyway, so now you've got this. And now it's I broke the prefab, so you're going to have to select the whole thing. So you go to kind of a bird's eye view, select the whole thing. And then we're going to drag this in front. And it was the um, second block in is where the door was. So you can also vertex select this to get it just right. So let me move it out. So I'm grabbing, see how I grab when I move things? I'm grabbing these tools here. Control Z that. If you grab just the blue or the red, it will keep it on the ground. And so I don't often use this, the other one there, the up arrow. Um, that way I don't get a floating object. But then I will use my V for vertex select and put me exactly one that one block in. And then I'm going to use the blue here and push it back. All right. All right. So now we'll go back to the image here. Now the sides of this are brick. So we really want to make that brick, but we still don't have our windows right. So the top window is a shutter. The bottom window is not a shutter. So let's duplicate this non-shutter one in the background. Bring that in. And this is really being picky, building something to exact specs. We're going to break this prefab. Remember, this is the 5x4 prefab. So I select that block. And yes, I want to break the prefab. And then V to vert picks this object, V to vertex select, and bring it in. All right. And then now, remember, these are brick. And it was a uh, it's sort of this kind of orangish brick. Do we have that yet? I don't know. Labeled one is brick brown. Um, Let's just make one just so you can see it again. Come back into the base materials folder. Should really make this bigger so you can see it. But materials, base, pick your brick, select it so it's highlighted in blue, control D. And now we're just going to call this one brick orange. And we're going to drag it into our base custom color. That way we don't ever mess up that original folder. And then we're going to make it sort of this orangey brick. Now, just as an aside, for those of you that use the beta, um, maybe a little lighter. Um, for those of you that use the beta and maybe like some of the window or the wall trim, I do have a um, base texture generator so you wouldn't have to use these materials I've already made you can also generate your base and this is really neat 
Um, I'm sure none of you will waste too much time in here, but I enjoyed making this one. But I've got a vertical uh, sort of texture that you can have, uh, sort of uh, just a trim. And then I've got this horizontal trim, which is a double line and a single line, which really allows you to get some variation. And then within each of those, you have materials. So you could put brick on brick um, or concrete over top of the brick and just get some. And I've got sort of a 3D effect going on there, which you can also remove if you want it to be a flat effect. So a lot of those uh, office building type things. I know Noput had a nice, um, you know, sort of like college-like building and they have some of this running through the middle. You can also do it at the bottom um, and allow yourself to kind of, there's a lot of possibilities here in terms of how you may want to decorate it, and then you can also give them color. So um, I know a lot of people probably won't uh, end up playing with this too much, but uh, it's kind of nice. And then you can export this, and then what you would do is then just change your brick texture. Instead of it to be this object, you wouldn't need any color with it. Um, you would end up just bringing that image in here, and then you'd change this color to white, um, and then you'd have a unique texture. If you do that, you'll also see the white on the mortar. Um, because I had to turn this into black and white, you don't get the white mortar, um, but you can get that back if you're really specific and you want to do that. Let me just show you that. So file, save as, and then you would save this as a PNG. And I'm just going to call this test. And then you're going to see, I can now import that. Um, you know, you probably want to do it cleanly so you could make a textures folder in here, but I'm just going to import that, that I just made this test. And you can see here, let's just uh, duplicate this brick, control D. I'm going to rename it test. And then I'm going to drag this right into it, turn this to white. And now you'll see this brick test, you know, is what we just built. So um, that'll allow some unique uh, type customizations there. I'm going to put it back to the brick orange, but uh, just show you how to do that real quick. Um, all right, so we're heading along here. Um, so did we put the dormer window in? I did that. Now we need this one, this next one, this one by, and we've got that right here. We'll bring that over and the lower window is bigger so you're going to break this prefab so pick the lower one delete it and then you're going to copy this one you can even copy this one here because it's already textured let's do that and then i'm going to drag this it's going to go right in front of this so i'm going to go v and drop it right in front of the other i left the roof behind so pick that up and control left mouse will pick each of these individually and allow you now all three of them are selected v and i'm lining that up and then i'm pushing it back now the one thing is if you line it up on the end you're going to get some clipping so you don't want it perfectly like that you're going to get clipping so you're going to inset it just a little bit and then i'm going to drag it out just a little bit to give some dimension there you know and then um let me look at what the image looks like. So it's uh, it's brick all the way up the front. My color is still terrible. And then we're going to do the roof. So the first thing you're going to do the fascia on the roof. That was the suburban black. Then we're going to do the dimensional shingle. That was also the black. So you can kind of see we're heading along here. Then we got to do the garage. Same thing, just going to pick up. Uh, so I don't have the garage. What you could do is select this piece here. I may not be able to grab it now. I've kind of put it I should have duplicated it that was dumb but uh, you can build it here real quick the garage was a two-piece so control D this this is two blocks wide and then come find the garage and that's over here control D and bring that over and um, 
you'll see here I'm going to stack this on top of the one garage piece here. Actually, that was a three by, I picked the wrong one, so control D this one. Delete that. Control D this one, even though this is going to be covered up uh, with a different garage. And then we're going to drop this back. All right, so for the sake of time, what I'm going to do is just leave it at this. And I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to put the roof on it, and then I'm going to show you how to make it a prefab. Now, one of the things you'll see here is, well, your garage is in front of this. That looks stupid. Um, so go grab this block here that has nothing on it other than the base texture. Control D that, and we're going to put that in place. So I'm going to delete this. The other thing is that's what's at the side of the house as well. So you can come pick it up here and Control D it and then V, drop that in. Now the one thing you'll notice is um, it starts to get hard to see in some direction. So you may have to go back to your directional light and uh, remember your settings here, but uh, I'm going to change the Y so I can see it. Um, so sometimes you may have to switch your lighting around so you can see what the heck you're doing on your build. And then I'm going to just submerge that just a little bit. So it's looking pretty good there. And uh, the only other thing I'll do here is just I'll do the porch for you and then we'll do the roof. So the porch, I've got two different porch panels. Uh, one's three meters and one's six meters. So we want on this that we want it to cover two blocks so we know it's six meters. So I'm going to grab that one, control D and drag that over. I also know I want a square pillar piece. And so I'm going to grab this smaller square pillar piece and that's 0.25 meters wide. There's also one that's half meter and then there's one that's one meter. So we're just dragging these over near our project. And then same thing, you can do the vertex choice here. And I'm going to do that and, and put it up against this back panel. So V and put it up against there just like that. And then you can drop this down just a little bit and get it off the window. All right. Now, um, the only thing you'll want to do is you might want to put a porch in as well. So you can see it's got that porch. You're going to pick up the porch pieces over here. So I've got one that mirrors the concrete from your window texture. So this is actually made from this window texture. And this top right square is concrete. And so in the end, this is how you can put in a little concrete piece. So this is the thinner one. This is 0.25 meters thick. And you can see the names of them tell you what the pieces are. So this is 0.25 by three meters. And it's made up by panel C3R1. If you're doing it in Unity, and you're uh, or you need in Photoshop and you're you're following along that C3R1's up here. So you always have the ability to know where that color comes from and you can and you can customize it if you want. In the end you don't have to because I've already done some of it for you. So you're going to control D that piece and bring it over. And like I said, all the blocks are that way. So let's pick this one. If you, if you learn some of the ways I've done this, but this is three meter by three meter one text, which just means it's a single texture. There's a three meter by three meter two text, which means it's two textures, facings one, and then the others are just the second texture. And you can see how that would come into play. On the side here, you would want this to be maybe siding going all the way across. Now I'm kind of forced into making all this a brick building. So anyway, we've got our porch piece, and we're gonna drag that back. And then I'm going to duplicate it and put it over. So later on, once we put the um, pillar down, I'll see where it lines up and we'll drag it back out correctly. But let's grab our pillar piece, control D it. Let's get it where we want it. And we can line this up flush with the end of the roof. And then what you can do is just control D. And then if you just grab this, uh, on the x-axis, basically, what was the red uh, arrow at that time. Just drag that straight across and then control D it once again and drag it straight across. And then we can actually vertex select this one 
and line it up with the corner, all right? And now you'll see, obviously, my porch, let me delete this or move this box out of the way, doesn't come out all the way. So let's just grab it, control left mouse to grab both those there. And then you can drag that out and that looks better. Now you see it's sticking out here. You may want to scoot it in. And so what I want to do also is scoot these in as well. Just little fussiness, all right? So that's basically the gist of it. Now you would come in, do the same um, for these. Um, Unfortunately, I don't, you could create a separate texture that's sort of a paint, but now you're creating a new material. So in the end, I'm going to use a material we're already using. You don't want to dump 12 different materials on this house because it's a lot harder on your graphics processor and your CPU. So really, you want to limit texturing to about two uh, base textures per house. And so now I'm going to go ahead and grab that stone that we've been using here. Um, and that was, was that this stone brown? Yeah. And you can always go back and check that. Pick another piece and see, okay, my colors are the window suburban black and stone variegated brown are my materials. So just going to drop that in. All right. So now we're pretty well on our way. We still haven't put the right window texture. See how it's saying C3R2 on our door. So let's put the window suburban black so that goes away. And then we're also going to do that same window suburban black on our concrete. And then we're going to do that on our fascia. And then we're going to go to the roof and make that black. So um, we're almost there. Let me just texture these just so the finished product looks correct. Now, I would actually do this piece differently to match it perfectly. But we're in the interest of time. I'm just going to. That's not what I want. Just stick that there it's because now what you can do is I guess what we've figured out is that we can actually select a bunch of these and then drop this in now you can only do that if the blocks are similar if the blocks carry two textures and, and one has one that you've selected it's not going to work I mean, You could also box select that, it may work better. See, this is where the double texture is going to come into play. See, I've got a problem. And uh, what you want on this side here is you want this to be a dual texture block. So let me just show you that real quick. Come over here and grab this block instead. Control D it, drag it over. And then I also know I need this one. So Control D it and bring it over. And so what you're going to do is this block instead is going to be this dual texture block. And now when I texture this one, let's put it in the right place first. When I texture this one, I'm going to texture the front with my, my brick, my brick orange. And then the side, I'm going to texture with my stone variegated brown. And so now we're going to match, you know. So in the end, you would do that same for this block as well and to get it to get it correct um, on the side, obviously. So let's put the roof on here. I know that's incorrect for right now. And then this is this is four deep. And so in the end, I know for me, I know this is one, two, three, three, four, four each of these. So this is four wide and this is the pitch I want. See it's a 12 meter wide which means it's three blocks of or four blocks of three meters and then it's three meters uh, in in depth and then it's three meters in height and then this is four and a half meters in height so that's the difference there. Just more of a pitch on it. So control D And then this, I've shown you before on this, but change your snap settings. So edit snap settings and make sure the rotation's on 90. So you would just type that in if it wasn't. I don't know what your base is, but I've got it on 90. And you can remember your default is maybe 10 or something and put it back. 
But what that's going to allow me to do is now you pick this rotational tool and it's going to turn perfectly 90 degrees and then we're going to pick it up with the arrows and then we're going to drop it in place here. And now in the end I'm going to I want to do uh, that hip roof so I'm going to put it in one and then um, what you're going to want to do is actually texture this one before you go too far um, because then their spots going to be blocked and you're not going to be able to texture them all and you're going to end up with more materials than you really want. So let's texture the side of this of one something we've, it's not going to be seen but something we've already used. So I'm doing the suburban black and the variegated stone and then the dimensional shingle black. And now when we control D these across, they're already done for us. And for the roof, I usually pick up the peaks and line up the peak, control D it one more time. All right, and now let's grab the hip. And so the hip pitch that's right next, these go together. You know, so here's the four and a half medium tall, and these two will mate, these mate. And then the same goes for some of these end caps. Um, the end caps are kind of nice. If you put two of these at a 90 degree to each other, um, there's going to be a void here, and that these end caps will fill that void. So same thing, we're going to turn this 90. We can Let's texture it right now while we're staring at it. So it's going to go to the black. It's going to go to the variegated stone, and then I need to do the fascia to the window suburban black. And then let's turn it 90. And then we'll pick it up. And I'm going to control D to duplicate it, drag it across. We're going to rotate it one more time. I'm holding down control when I rotate left mouse and then drag to the left there when I do that. Then you have to pick it again and then slide it over. All right, so now we're done. Now I'm going to show you how to save your prefab. So I'm going to come up here and first box select and just get the house move it. You see I've picked this other block, so control left mouse to deselect that. Now just make sure I've got the whole house, which I do. Control Z to drop it on the ground. All right, so now I've got just my house block um, the way I want it. Now I didn't, let's fix that real quick. If you're seeing these CR3s, it means you still have to drop your window material over it. You know, so that's getting rid of the base block texture and going to the one you're going to be using in the scene. Same with the fascia here. And then I didn't do the side texture there. So, you you know, you got to pay attention on these. It'll take you a little bit of time to get used to it. But honestly, it's, it's not bad. Um, so now what we want to do is create a prefab for this. The way you're going to do it is go to your hierarchy and go to create and create an empty. You're going to click on this once. It's going to highlight blue. You're going to click on it one more time with left mouse and rename it. And we're just going to name this Suburban. And I... And we'll just call it Suburban 01. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all the blocks that I want to become Suburban 01. So I'm going to left mouse click and drag over the house. And it's selected all the blocks that I want for this. And then I'm going to left mouse and drag it to Suburban 01. And so now they're all in the Suburban 01 container. Um, so when I pick Suburban 01 here, let me deselect. Pick Suburban 01, see how it picks the house. Now, I don't have a prefab yet. It's just contained all my blocks within this Suburban 01. And so now I'm going to shrink these down. And you're going to want a, uh, I'll actually just make it for you. But you're going to want just a custom houses folder. So now I guess when I package it, you'll have this. But uh, what you're going to do with that is now you're going to come back to the hierarchy and pick Suburban 01 and left mouse and drag this into custom houses. And it will automate, automatically make your prefab. So watch this, I'm gonna scare you here. I'm gonna delete this. So I'm gonna pick it and delete it. Suburban 1 is gone. I'm gonna come here and pick all my blocks. I'm gonna delete that. So now it's not gonna affect your project. All that's gone. I'm gonna go back here and grab Suburban 01, that prefab I made. And there it is. 
So now you can put this as many times as you want in your scene, rotate it how you like. Now, when you're building on your course and you want it to rotate perfectly, remember you go back and fix your snap settings and put your rotations on the 10. And uh, that way you can do it a little more uh, controlled on your course. I guess you can let go of control and then do it um, more precisely if you want. So hopefully that gets you all started with the house builder. I know it's a lot to take in at first, but um, it's a lot of fun to play around with. All right, enjoy.